Hi everybody, welcome to Amy Nolte Music. I'm pretty excited because just a few minutes ago I had a knock on my door and it was June Lee. <laughs> welcome June. Thank you, Amy. <laughs> uh, I'm such a big fan of June's and I have been for a long time and we have a, well, a, like a mutual friend that connected us named Jacob Collier. And I mean, you didn't directly connect us, but that's how well, I know you. I guess, inspirations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mutual in inspiration. Um, <laughs> and of course, you guys all know June as a wonderful pianist and well, performer. I hope you know him as that and, and the, the transcriber of many Jacob Collier compositions <laughs> yeah. and performances. Each morning I get up with a song. <laughs> you about that when did you discover Jacob and decide that you needed to figure out what he was doing I think the first arrangement I I discovered was close to you it's around 2014 but I I didn't really know enough about jazz to be able to have the courage to transcribe but when I was in about 2016 I realized that I needed to to know this I want to improve my ears and I don't know where the courage came from but but I started with the, the easier ones like isn't she lovely? And I've, yeah, it's not not, not that easy, but you know, at, at that time it seemed accessible to me to, to start it. So I started with those things. Did you start with something easier, the Beach Boys or like any, like uh, take it you love vocal harmony. Yeah, um, I started with Manhattan Transfer, New York Voices, the four, four part voices. Mm -hmm. I think what I really love about those is the voice leading, the instrumental, well, vocal arrangements tend to have much better voice leading than instrumental because you can't expect singers to jump from da 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 da, you know. Yeah. So that that tends to be really a good, uh, uh, a huge thing in arranging, and I was really inspired by that. So I started with New York Voices, Manhattan Transfer, Four Part Harmony, and then I was exposed to Take Six, Six Part Harmony, and that's that's another like level up because you have usually they I think they would describe it as like bottom part top part and usually it's a combination of, of two different triads or two different seven chords and that really helped me understand harmony better and then and then Jacob Collier which is a lot of things you know usually eight part to nine part on, on the on the screen there, there are only six faces but he overdubs so and he, and he lip syncs so it's mm -hmm. usually seven plus parts with all the instruments and I don't know why I started you know, meticulously writing it down. Something told me that I couldn't do it, and I, for some reason, I wanted to prove myself wrong. And then, it like I don't a know. Self-inflicted challenge. I guess. I yeah. Like that. Yeah. I, I, that it started out as that way. It started out as that way, and then I realized I was learning so much from it. My ears were improving so much, and I realized like I can do this to, to with with harder songs. And then I moved. Yeah, that's how I started. And you're not stopping. Like at this point, at this point, he's, he's going to put out three more albums before the year's over, right? Right. And what's driving you now? I don't think I'll be transcribing all the songs that's, that are going to come out, but there are definitely tracks that, that, are, that I think are really fascinating. For, for example, from the Jesse Volume 1, it was Once You, the or, lush orchestral arranging, and then... That's yeah. my favorite, too. Yeah. We've talked about it. Yeah. So, so it was your favorite, basically? Yeah, and I think I'm 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 really inspired by har harmonic fluidity. I would say, mm -hmm. you know, my, my harmony doesn't go the way I expect, and then then that really gets gets my nerd brain going. And yeah. once you definitely is, is like that. Once you is like the fir on my first listen, I was just kind of overcome by how beautiful it was. Yeah, and I I wasn't trying to figure out anything, and I, I was I just was listening to the lyric. Right, and the the overall sound and everything and and I thought this is this is relatively simple um, mm. for Jacob but the more I um, dove into it and watched you dive into it more importantly because yeah. you transcribed the whole thing I I realized how uh, it, it's not completely simple it, it moves around a lot right it's 
I haven't counted the modulations, but there are a whole lot of them. Basically, each section is in different key. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't feel that way when you're listening because you're... Yeah. You, you hardly realize. Right. You're listening to the lyrics and the beauty of it, but then you realize when you, you with the transcription, it's like it started out as some sort of a D flat major key, mm-hmm. and then the, the verse is an E flat. And right. <laughs> yeah, it's everything is different in a different key. And then the 5-4 section, of course. Yeah. So, you know, rhythm-wise, it's also not not that simple yeah um and i like my favorite thing to look at in these all of these transcriptions when i go check out what you've done you know i'll I'll pause my screen and uh make sure it's nice and big and then i'll what i like to look at is is just a couple of bars before the modulation and how he does it right yeah yeah yeah. i think there's several spots in, in that song that that modulates in such a weird way but it you know I can't describe other than like playing it, but mm-hmm. they don't go the where you where you expect them to go, but it somehow works. Yeah, I think that's a, that's something about Jacob's music that really inspires me. And always melody driven too, which is how it should be, I think. Yeah, yeah, melody. If you if you write that write that tune down in lead sheet, it's just nice, you know. I wouldn't say waltz, but it's in three four. Yeah, great melody. You know. Yeah. Do you yeah. want to play it? Yeah, let's let's do it. All right. <laughs> All right. What key are we starting in? Or we're going to do this song in C. We're going to do it in C instead of E flat, right? Yeah. Okay. Hold. 
Beautiful, June. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, um, you, could you tell me a little bit about how you knew that you were good at music when you were small? I've never really thought about it that way. I, I actually, well, I started piano lessons when I was four. Okay. Classical piano lessons. Then I quit when I was around six or seven. And it was because of because I didn't like classical music and I didn't like practicing. But even after that, I think music has always been a part of my life. And I, it was, I started writing tunes for fun and transcribing like movie music and see if, seeing if I can play it, that, those, that kind of thing. So And how old? Pretty young. I mean, I, I didn't like write it down or anything, but I could you know, see, play Harry Potter themes. On the piano? On the piano, Lord of the Rings. You know, those... Could you read music at that point? Yeah, of course, because classical music, but yeah. Even from four to six, that was enough to... I think so, yeah. It was a quite, it was rigorous training, but that's why I really hated it. <laughs> Did you start on another instrument? Do you play the clarinet or anything in school? Or... No, just piano. Okay. Yeah, but I think that, that early experience, early exposure to, uh, to great music, yeah, that, that's really shaped my personality, I guess. Yeah. And then high school? High school, um, I don't want to, you know, take the time talking about like my mm -hmm. whole life story, but I moved here in 2008, so that's about 10, 10 years ago. This to Indiana? To Indiana, yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, and in high school there was nothing to do <laughs> except for music because I, I had no friends. <laughs> I, my, my English was, was so oh, terrible. Oh, basketball, right. <laughs> right, but I wasn't that athletic. Yeah. So, yeah, that, so I I signed up for a bunch of music classes. Like, I did... I played clarinet in concert band. I guessed it. <laughs> yeah, nice. I don't know how I did it, but yeah, I, I, I look for everything musical in high school. I sang and played in musicals, high school, like productions, in choir, concert band, jazz band, basically everything. And at that point, it was just, music was still just a fun thing for me, but I realized that I some, at some point I need to make that sacrifice of like choosing one, one thing. Mm -hmm. And it was too late for me because I wasn't really good at anything. You, know? you weren't a good piano player? I'll bet you were. Not, not really, no. I mean, I didn't practice at all, so my mm -hmm. chops were terrible. But but you could probably play what you wanted to play. Right, yeah, for fun. Yeah. Did you listen to pop music? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you could probably play any... I could play pop music. Yeah. But, you know, I wish there were pop, pop majors in, in <laughs> music music universities, and there weren't. So I realized that I had to, to choose something and then get good at it. And yeah. I started writing music. That was so. I started. I started college in, in classical composition, and that didn't really work out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've heard yeah. some of your classical compositions. Oh, really? In your early YouTube channel. Oh, man. They're beautiful. They're weird. <laughs> but, yeah. I mean, yeah, that's what I appreciate college is it. For. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Then you changed your major to jazz voice, which was a big change. I don't know why. I still don't know why I did it, but I, I, I never really thought of myself as a singer mm -hmm. who leads up. You know, who leads a band or who stands in front of a of a band, you know. But Did you I, have to take vocal lessons? Yes. So you learned some technique. Yeah. I learned technique, but I, I always thought of myself more of a, more as a vocal arranger than a singer. Mm hmm But that was that was great experience. And then I realized that I need to practice piano because all the harmony all the har harmonies that I, I want to write, I didn't know what to do with them. Because mm. I you know, piano it's so intuitive on the piano because it's from low to high. But I didn't have that in my brain and that's when I 
started practicing piano more. You're such a good piano player. I can't believe that it's just come to you in the last few years. I appreciate you saying that, but I don't feel that way at all. No, you're very... I, I can play... I, I, I've always been able to play chords, mm -hmm. but I didn't really have much technique. And that's something that I, I worked with, with during my master's. Well, chords are the best part, so... Yeah. <laughs> Agreed. You, your vocal range is amazing. What's your low note? Uh, D. 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 C sharp. Oh my gosh. I, sometimes I can see, hit the C sharp when I'm when I'm sick. And then I bet you can sing just about as high as you want to. Not really, but I, my falsetto is fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah. I, I'm always jealous of men. Because of their falsetto, that's okay. No, because of your low range. Oh, I mean, okay. I can sing high if I want to, but I can't sing. Maybe you need to bring a I bass I can't sing pedal. below that D. Right. Yeah, I might need to break out a pedal at some point. Yeah. Let's see, June, I would, I'd like to ask you about your perfect pitch. Okay. And and ask you how far it goes. Well, when, when did you, did it, somebody tell you you had it at some point? I learned it when I was 12. I was jamming in the classroom, playing Pirates of the Caribbean theme. It goes like... Which is... Yeah. Basically the lick, by the way. I learned that the other day. It's oh pretty gosh. weird. Anyway. Okay. Yeah. You know, and, know everything connects. Yeah. And then a friend of mine told me, like, how, do, how can you do that? And I, I, I told him, can you not? And mm -hmm. he said, no. I, I just realized, well, this is perfect pitch. Wow. Mm -hmm. That was 12. I think, I mean, when Rick Beato talks about his kids. Yeah. And their perfect pitch, a lot of times he'll say to one of them, uh, you know, can you s tell me, sing me Frozen or sing me Jurassic Park? And they do it right in, right in pitch. But he uses film music yeah, almost always. I wonder if that was kind of a key for you, like those certain sounds associated with the, the movie. I don't know. I think, yeah, definitely. There's a song that I really liked when I was young, and it starts with C sharp. So my, my pitch on C sharp is stronger than, than other pitches. Mm. And I think it kind of started that way. Like once I learned how to wear C sharp, oh, so, and then I... You know, with relative find pitch, find other things. And then, like, identifying chords is a whole different story. Because when, when there are a lot of notes together, it's obviously more difficult. <laughs> right. Yeah. And so do you mind if I um, try some things? Because I wonder about you. Go for it. Okay. Okay, so the first thing I wonder is um, just what if I... Uh... Oh, my gosh. Okay, that's awesome. Uh, oh, wait. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You should, you, should you should put that in the video. You should kidding. put that in, like, I don't know, at the end or something. Okay. It's like, it's, I can't play it because... It's in between? Yeah. You knew. That's amazing. Okay, okay. And, and then just uh, close your eyes, look up something. Fast. D, D, E flat, A flat, D, D, C, F, G, B flat, D flat, A flat, A flat, B flat, E, B, F sharp. Yeah, amazing. How about, um, E flat. Yeah. How about, what if I just give you like a random, um, line like on the saxophone okay or what if i take a line from the michael brecker soft days in a morning sunrise uh where he's playing um he's playing a live concert okay here we go mm-hmm <laughs> it's a it's a it's a chordal, chordal thing right <laughs> yeah it's a chordal thing that's yeah. right <laughs> it's like real real time transcription. Okay, okay. Yeah. You, you can stop now. That that okay. was great. All my dreams came true with this. Thank you, Jim. <laughs> Thanks, Amy. Yeah, no problem. With music, what's the what's the goal? I think right now, whatever I write or or do, it's gonna resemble somebody else, and that's okay. You know, we all imitate and learn. I don't know. I, I feel like I'm still that stage of learning, and. It's true that you, you don't have to, like you can you can do the thing things anytime, you know without. I need to find a better way to put this. I heard you, Jacob say it. 
Yeah, yeah. Somebody when when I went to the Blue Note and I wanted to interview him, but I didn't yeah. really get to. I heard everybody ask him questions. Oh really? Yeah. And they somebody said, "What's like your advice? What would be your advice for me? If, you know, in high school or whatever." And he just said, "You can do something now." Yes, everybody can do something, but I think for me, I want to find my own voice, and I don't want to be like the second version of somebody else, but by imitation. So. You feel like you're pieces of people right now. Say that again. Do you feel like you are pieces of other people? I think so. Yeah, and everybody is. You know, we all yeah. we all learn things from other people. But I don't think I've paid my dues enough. <laughs> Me neither. No. <laughs> right. <laughs> Whenever and, we. You know, when 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 is that point? Like that's a that's a that's up for debate. But right now, I've, I I need to I need to learn more and. I need to get my techniques together <laughs> on the piano and then maybe singing. But I guess the thing about transcription is that I I just started doing it and then I started finding my own ways of listening to chords, and you know it, it was it's been a, a tremendous experience for me because I started you know investing myself into something and then seeing the good positive effects. But mm -hmm. but I haven't I don't think I've had that experience with piano yet. Really? Yeah. It'll yeah. come. I mean. You just, uh, I mean, you just inspired me a ton watching, watching and listening oh. to you play. So, thanks, like, Amy. Yeah, I mean, I love your humble attitude, but don't sell yourself short. You've got a lot to offer the world. <laughs> I'm so excited to see what you do. Thanks. Can we play and sing one together, something? Oh yeah, you know, Blackbird by Beatles. Beatles, Blackbird. That's a great yeah. idea. Yeah, let's totally do it. All right, in let's do it in B flat. Uh, yeah, I like that B flat. <laughs> Singing in the dead of night Take these broken wings and learn to fly All your life You were only waiting for this moment to arrive Blackbird singing in the dead of night Take the sunken eyes and learn to see all your life. You were only waiting for this moment to be free. Blackbird fly. Blackbird fly. Into the light of the dark black night. Singing in the dead of night Take these broken wings and learn to fly All your life You were only waiting for this moment to arrive You are only waiting for this moment to arrive You are only waiting for this moment to arrive You were only waiting. You were only waiting.
waiting you were only waiting for this moment to to enjoyed that <laughs> nice to meet you june lee nice to meet you amy <laughs> thanks everybody for watching we'll see you next time on amy nolte music <laughs>